A beach you can't play at. Food deemed unsafe to eat. Air you cannot breathe. These are slowly becoming a part of our reality. Action must be taken now. This is what the shores of Thailand looks like after thousands of fish had been suffocated by a phytoplankton bloom. Phytoplankton, also known as algae, are a microscopic organism that live in both saltwater and freshwater. They play a crucial role in a balanced ecosystem as they provide food for sea creatures. They're usually found near the surface as they need the sun's rays to grow. Although they're necessary for life on Earth, as you saw in the example from Thailand, they can sometimes threaten coastal ecosystems, fisheries, and even human health. Phytoplankton releases loads of toxins, which can cause oxygen depletion, and over the years has only been on the rise. Between the years 2003 and 2020, phytoplankton have increased in size by 13%, and they've become 59% more frequent as well. It's not just sea animals that are being affected by this. Some cyanobacteria, which is a type of phytoplankton, produce toxins that can cause neurological damage, and there are also others that can cause liver damage, skin irritations, or respiratory problems. Both people and their pets can be exposed to this toxin if they swim in or swallow contaminated water, inhale droplets of airborne toxins, or if they eat contaminated fish, even if it's been cooked. And that's the terrifying part. And these blooms have also affected 31 and a half million total square kilometers. That's roughly 9% of all ocean area, or nearly three whole United States. One of the main contributing factors to this is climate change. There are three main ways that climate change creates conditions that increase the likelihood for blooms to occur. Droughts, higher levels of carbon dioxide, and rising sea levels. When droughts are followed by extreme precipitation, it increases the runoff from agricultural lands. This delivers excess nutrients to the water for phytoplankton to thrive. Droughts can also reduce the flow in water bodies, making it warmer and more stagnant. And this is exactly what blooms favor. Higher levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and water also promote algae growth, especially of toxic cyanobacteria. And rising sea levels cause coastal waters to be stabler and shallower, which enhances algae growth as well. Moving on to oil spills, I'll have my partner, Sam Lawrence, speak about this. In 2005, in a major oil spill in Tampa Bay, Florida, 20,000 birds, 5,000 fish, and around 10 different crustacean habitats were destroyed. This was caused by three crude oil vessels colliding. The first vessel had a major explosion and released a total of 20,000 gallons of oil. The second vessel, two minutes later, had another explosion. It released about 50,000 gallons of oil. The third vessel had minor damage and only reached around 2,000 gallons of oil. Because of this, it took Tampa Bay 10 and a half years to fix all this oil damage and to get their mangroves and other habitats back to what had been beforehand. To track and monitor these harmful algae blooms and oil spills, we would use the Glimmer satellite. The Glimmer would be able to observe these areas and would lead to communication to federal, state, or local agencies to take action. Glimmer is planning to launch and operate around the years of 2026 to 2027, and will mostly be observing areas around Central America, being the Gulf of Mexico, United States Southeastern Coastline, and the Atlantic Ocean for around 15 hours a day. In all, Glimmer would play a very large role in informing people to combat algae blooms and oil spills. Another way we can combat algae blooms in the short term is with shading and algicides, as they can help take control of large harmful algal blooms. Shading is the mitigation of sunlight, preventing algal blooms, which are basically plants, from growing. Algicides are chemicals or substances that can eliminate algae. Although it is important to mitigate possible environmental hazards, it is more important to prevent algae blooms from occurring in the first place. The two factors that contribute to harmful algae blooms are excess nutrients and increased water temperature. Increased water temperature is caused by global warming, which is a big problem, but we can work to combat it. An easier problem to solve is excess nutrients, which are caused by runoff from farms. Nitrogen in the fertilizer and animal waste can leach into water that leads to the oceans, and this contributes to algae blooms growing. Both oil spills and phytoplankton blooms show the negative effects of human greed on the world. However, with the help of Stokes Space, Sequoia Scientific, and NASA, we can combat these issues, leading to a brighter tomorrow. Dear Stokes Space, this is not only our future that is on the line, but it is also the future of our children's and the generations yet to come. With each passing day, algae blooms are only worsening, and as members of Gen Z, we care greatly about our planet, but we lack the power to stand up against this pressing issue. However, you have the power to take charge and fight back. 
we humbly ask you to explore additional solutions for these environmental challenges. The future is counting on you. Do not let the introduction become a reality. Thank you.